What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ghost Rats and today we're going to be looking into what is a subnet. Um, we're going to be breaking it down from the, to the simplest form, uh, what it actually is, why it exists. Uh, subnetting is something good to know. Um, it's good to know of it and why it's practiced and why it's used. And I want to break it down simply in this video on what, what it actually is. All right, so before we start talking about what exactly a subnet is, I'm going to talk to you about a problem first that subnets solve. It's good to know the reason why something is um, before you actually get the understanding of why something is, if that makes any sense. So let's start off with this white piece of paper, right? I want you to imagine that this piece of paper is everything inside of your network. These dots right here are two devices inside your network. Now, these two devices are constantly communicating and broadcasting. Hey, my name is Laptop A. Hey, my name is Cell Phone B. It's, these devices are constantly broadcasting and broadcasting information inside of your network. So just like when you drop water in a, in a lake and you see the ripple, it's constantly broadcasting, it's constantly sending messages, and it's causing some network clutter. So in a home network, you don't really need subnets because you only have a few devices, right? Maybe you have a smart TV, a couple Wi-Fi cameras, your laptop, uh, maybe a gaming console. So you have all these devices talking to one another, broadcasting their names, saying, I'm here, are you there? I'm there, are you there? They're just constantly talking to each other. The problem is when you have these networks and you grow in scale. So if you're in a business or a corporation, you start adding, you're, you're a small business and you're starting to grow. You add another computer here, another desk here, another employee here, another something there, another device here, and you just so on and so on and so on. Now these devices are constantly broadcasting and talking, and now it's just a complete mess. And now your network traffic, it's just getting, there's collisions happening. There's so much noise that it can't really send data properly. So what a subnet does, it takes all of this, and it helps divide it. So now, let's say you have a business. Let's look at this building as a network, okay? So instead of having that mess that I showed you earlier, we have different floors that segregate the clients. So right here, we have an IT department, we have a marketing department, and we have a finance department. All these are in the same network, but they're separated by floors. These floors are your subnets. So the subnets separate these networks. So these people in IT can't hear anything going on in marketing. So when these two guys are talking to each other and they're broadcasting their information and he's broadcasting their information, it doesn't separate between these floors. So that shatter is no longer over the place and is constantly broadcasting and it's constantly making noise. You kind of slow that down because there's less clients and it's segregated and helps keep it manageable. So less collisions, you have less data, being um, lost and uh, it's just a less noisy environment. All right, so going back to the visual that we made earlier. So these are all your devices within your network and your subnets, what they do is that they make little mini networks inside the network. So now when all this traffic is broadcasting, it doesn't leave these bubbles. It doesn't leave these subnets. So when you have different subnets on a network, it keeps the network traffic down to a minimum and it's less noise. So if you remember from earlier, you don't longer have this. You don't have. You don't longer have all this congestion. It's now organized. And you have less broadcasting data and collisions because you have less devices on that particular part of the network. Before we move on, I want to give you guys more visuals. So, pretend this is a highway, right? This highway, this road is your network. You have all these data packets going through your network. If your network is congested with a lot of data, so like your, norm, your normal home network, you have a couple of devices on it. There's plenty of space and plenty of room for cars to go fast. But the more cars you add on the highway, the slower people get, and it's tougher for people to make the right decisions, but that's a whole different thing. But nevertheless, if you're in a big corporation or business, you're like bumper to bumper traffic. So what ends up happening is he's beeping his horn, he's beeping their horn, no one knows where they're going. What you end up doing is when you have a subnet, so you make a couple subnets, so let's make a couple more roads, because that's theoretically what you're doing. A couple more roads, this roads are a lot smaller than the other one. You're breaking up the network traffic. So now, instead of being bumper to bumper traffic on one lane, you now have this data traveling in multiple lanes. Now, these datas cannot cross over. So these subnets are completely separate roads where this device can't talk to this device unless you have some type of bridge, a router, but that's a whole different thing, but I want to just get this fundamental down first, but these roads are completely separate from each other. And that's the reason why that these, this data can travel 
a lot more efficiently in both directions um, instead of it all being congested in one end. And the other issue you have is if you go back to the one road, if you have only one uh, network and you have no subnets on it, um, and you have a lot of devices, it, you are prone to have more data collisions. And we'll break into that more later on in the video. And they go back to the multiple roads and the multiple subnets. Since you have mo more roads and more lanes of, for traffic to pass, it's less likely for this stuff to collide. If they're on different roads, they can't collide with one another. And you're freeing up, instead of everybody in one lane and one road, which more possibilities for collisions going anyway, you have multiple lanes that allow data to pass through without collisions if that makes any sense so without a subnet you get one road with a subnet you have multiple roads and you have and depending on how you set up your subnet it can allow so many clients and hosts but we won't break into that in that video it's pretty that's pretty in-depth and i don't think it's necessary because the thing called the vlans that exist and we'll, at the, toward the end of this video we'll talk about that because uh, there's a reason why uh, i don't want to go too in depth with it and i'll explain that later but let's go in to talk about a little bit more in detail what this is. So that's the first level of understanding. And I might even make one more visual. Hold on. All right, I'm going to use people for an example here. So you have multiple people in a room. We have one, two. So we have very few devices. It's not a problem. They can pretty much yell across a room without any problems. But then you get another two people. I don't think this one's going to stand up for me. Now, we know when you're trying to talk in a room and other people are talking aloud and it's hard to hear each other. So now you keep adding these devices that want to talk to each other over each other in a single network without segregation you can you're gonna have a hard time hearing the other person and that is that is exactly what happens when you have an oversaturated network without subnets or any kind of segregation is that all the devices can't hear each other sometimes because you have other devices yelling and talking and as you add more devices they yell and talk and we'll explain why that gets really bad over time but again with the subnet is that these two people can talk to each other these two people could talk to each other and now you have separate areas for these guys to talk with pretend there's a giant wall here that these people can't hear each other anymore so these two devices talk to each other now without any interference of these but they're all connected to the same place if that makes any sense and for these things to, to communicate you need a router in between if they wanted something like that to happen that's very important and i hope you guys those i give you all like three different types of visuals of how subnets actually work but we're, now we're gonna get into more in depth so that was my basic throw understanding up front um, and I now want to I'm gonna get a little bit more in detail So stick around in the video. We want to get a little bit more um, in depth with it And I'm also gonna bring up VLANs in, uh, in a moment and why you see VLANs a little bit more in the uh, Networking space and, and the professional space and you use subnets All right, so let's summarize everything that we just learned real quick subnetting reduces broadcast traffic within each subnet broadcasts are contained within subnets, minimizing network congestion and improving overall performance by avoiding unnecessary traffic across the entire network. Network noise and collisions. A network collision occurs when two or more devices try to send data over the same network channel. At the same time, th this overlap causes their signals to interfere with each other, making the data unreadable. What's the impact of a collision? The data is corrupted and not properly received. Devices must resend their data after detecting the collision, which can slow down the network even further. So after there's a collision, the devices have to resend out those packets. So if you have, it's like now you're behind a step and now it's trying to broadcast. Now if that collides, then it just gets snowballs into this chunk of noise because it's constantly trying to send data. Then, it, then it's going to affect some other device on your network. So it just gets really congested and bogged down. So if you're ever at work and you're noticing that your network is really slow, it's probably because they're not, it's not set up properly and divided. Um, subnets can fix that, fix that issue. Um, also VLANs, we'll get into that later. Um, but uh, that's why that happens. That's why it's so significant. Let's talk about some benefits of, for subnets here. Let's talk about a couple of reasons why they're so beneficial. Subnetting allows you to divide a large network into smaller manageable subnets. This improves organization by locally grouping devices based on dependence, functions, and or locations. Number two, enhanced performance. Smaller subnets limit the scope of broadcast traffic, reducing network congestion and improving performance. Broadcasts are only sent to devices within the same subnet, not the entire network, which you saw in, in those live demonstrations a little while ago. Security. 
Subnets can enhance security by isolating sensitive or critical systems within their own subnets. This limits potential exposure to threats. Here's another good reason, which we talked about in my latest IP, what's an IP address video. Efficient IP address utilization. Subnets help in efficiently managing IP addresses, especially in IPv4 networks where address space is limited. It prevents address wasting by allocating the right number of addresses to each subnet. Okay, that's gonna be it for this video. I'm going to be explaining what a VLAN is in the next video and why you see VLANs more than actual subnets and networks. In the next video, I'm gonna be comparing the two and explaining why VLANs are better and more cost efficient. If you like these ADHD friendly tech videos, um, please leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and remember, safety is an illusion, and I'll see you in the next video.